Magmortar really feels like it should be better than it is. It's currently below never used, and while it's super mid in terms of speed, it does have some solid special attack with base 125. Its ability Flame Body will randomly come in clutch to burn the opponent if they make contact with you 30% of the time, but for the most part, we're blasting off stab flamethrowers that do hit kinda hard, along with solid coverage options in Thunderbolt and things like Psychic. We can catch people by surprise with a wombo combo of Solar Beam paired with Terra Grass, and even bust out the Power Herb to get this off in one turn. Magmorner may not be overpowered, but it can still do things. So Magmortar has been pretty low tier like its entire life, but I just think he's cool and so we're gonna show this fella some love today. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent has a very interesting team. First of all, it's got some rain because they of course have a toilet bird along with a Barrascuti in the back. And they also have things like Ditto, and overall pretty interesting. So, I am going to lead off with my Spider, and I'm here to set up some Sticky Web, hopefully slow some things down and get them all caught up. But first of all, I'm greeted with a turn 1 Hurricane, and rude, first of all. But also, I do live with my Focus Ash, luckily, except I get confused, which is even more rude. And now I'm just really hoping I can break through this confusion, because that would be like a horrible start. So... Roberto luckily does come in clutch, and I do not hit myself, allows me to set up my sticky web, and that should be able to stick around. So at this point, I don't really have much that wants to switch into this Pelipper. If it wants to Hurricane, the only thing it could switch in is like the Sandy Shocks, but then if they Surf, I'm in trouble. So I decide to stay in and go for a Sucker Punch for a little bit of chip. Instead, I Sucker Punch myself, which, you know, we've all been there. Mr. Eridos, thanks for that. So I do knock myself out as they actually take this opportunity to set up a Tailwind on the empty battlefield. So now this Pelipper not only threatens me pretty much on everything offensively, but also is now faster than everything. So that is not ideal, except the one thing I can do is this. Check it out. I'm going to bring in Sandy Cheeks, who, you know, obviously gets outsped under Tailwind and then hit with a Surf. However, I'm actually forced to go for a Terra Electric. It's going to take away my ground typing, now allow Surf under the rain to be at least a neutral hit, which I should be able to live and then fire off a little, little Volt Switch action and take care of Pelipper, which would be good because then they don't have any reliable rain set up and then Barracuda is a whole lot easier in the back. So, I bust out the Terra, they are going to be faster, but he flaps his wings into a nice friggin' tidal wave, but we do just barely hang on, thank god, which then allows us to fire off a nice little boosted 4 times super effective Volt Switch, and we just burn that fella to a damn crisp into the Shadow Realm. So. That takes care of Pelipper. I did have to commit you know, a Terra in order to not get just swept by the thing, or at least close to it, so that's fine. At this point, since I knocked it out with a Volt Switch, I now have to go into a Mon, and they can see what that is to decide a matchup. So I decide to go into the Decidueye, as it actually ends up bringing in the Ditto. So we got a little jelly action. Honestly, I'm always like more afraid of Ditto than I feel like I should be, but this little bastard's always a freaking threat. So, Imposter turns them into me, and it did touch the Sticky Web, notably, so I should be faster. And uh, I'm just kind of like, this. I don't want to hit, get hit with a Spirit Shackle, and I don't know what this thing's working with. So, I realize that my safest play is actually just switching to the Toxic Croak. I, I know what this thing's working with in terms of attacks, and I should be pretty solid with that. And they're actually going to end up busting out the Terra, so... The My Decidueye is now going to be Terra Dragon, which is uh, an interesting defensive typing. Now I don't have as good of a matchup with like a Sucker Punch as I was looking for. And as they do bust out the Spirit Shackle, keep in mind I am expecting this to be a Choice Scarf. It, it is gonna, it's going to hurt. That uh, definitely does a lot, and the Sucker Punch isn't as much in play. I do actually get a little bit of dry skin. Thank God your boy is ashy out here, and we do soak up a little bit of the rain. I decided to go for the Sucker Punch anyway, because then I'm like, you know what, I don't really, now I don't have anything that switches into it, and <laughs> the Sucker Punch actually activates a red card, so it is not Scarf, and instead, it's going to be the red card, which then draws out friggin' Sandy Cheeks, who it just immediately is greeted by a friggin' arrow to the light bulb, which that shit hurt it. So I lose Sandy Chocks for basically no reason, or at least the red card kind of hoed me over there, but... Uh, that's mostly fine, because now at least finally I can have a revenge switch in here. So, the Tailwind does go away, and I know it's basically not Scarf, it's under Sticky Web, and now Buddy is looking nice and slow. Not so fast that your weird little wind behind you, are you? So, I can now go into the Galarian Zapdos. I know that I can just outspeed here, and a close combat at that range definitely takes care of it. 
Um, and uh, not a lot wants to deal with the Zapdos at least. So I go for the close combat here. They're actually going to end up switching in the Clef Key. It was literally, it, the thing's like two inches big. The smallest Clef Key ever. And close combat actually didn't even show an animation there. Either <laughs> with the freaking stat drops. I swear to God my game is always so broken. But uh, two hit KO on the close combat feels nice. Theta is going to allow them to go for a reflect, which... Is a bit unfortunate because it's probably Light Clay and that's going to stick around, but the good news is the Klefki is dead. And that's always actually great news because Klefki is stupid and I hate his prankster nonsense. So that does take care of Klefki. You can still barely see him over there. There he is. And uh, now he's dead. So now they have a revenge switch into whatever they would like. They are actually going to end up bringing in the Pultigeist. So here's the thing. It does touch the Sticky Web, which does drop this thing's speed. One thing to note is it did not have a white herb, meaning it didn't restore those stats, meaning it's probably Focus Sash, and I definitely need to break that thing's Focus Sash. It's more than likely going to go ahead and Shell Smash here, and at least the Sticky Web is going to help out. So I go for the knockoff, which does get that damage that we're looking for. While I do activate the weak armor, I'm actually fine with that. The reason is because I have a couple different forms of priority in the back. And even with that Shell Smash, I'm not super afraid. So, weak armor plus the Shell Smash plus the Sticky Web. It's a weird speed situation going on. But moral of the story, the Teacup is zooming. At least faster than the Galarian Zap at this point. So, Rain goes away. Not really helping either of us. Um, but I decide I'm going to conserve the Zapdos and keep it in the back pocket just in case. That's because Toxic Croak doesn't really do a whole lot for me in this late game. So, I decide to bring in the Croak basically as Death Fodder here because... I have the priority with the Decidueye in the back, and uh, we're looking good. Now, I am keeping in mind everything else that they have left, Magmortar is actually pretty clutch for, and um, I'm kind of keeping that as a win condition in the back, and hopefully we can make that happen. So I bring in Decidueye, mostly just because now I can go for that Shadow Sneak, and uh, we don't care how fast your T is, it's gonna die into the Sneak. So they realize that the priority is probably gonna happen. They've also seen this moveset having transformed into it from their Ditto, so they you know, they know exactly what I'm working with uh, on this Decidueye, and that's actually going to draw in the Amoongus, which is one of the main reasons why I've been trying to conserve the Magmortar for this late game, is because I don't really have anything else that can actually touch uh, this friggin' Mushroom. The mushroom of friggin' death over here. So, I decide they can't really spore me, plus I can take a couple of Sludge Bombs, but it's actually worthwhile to go for a Sword Stance here, just in case, uh, you know, I, I can live some stuff and then start to stack up with the Spirit Shackle. But they actually end up getting the poison, which is unfortunate. And that means that pretty much after this next one, I'm not really going to be in a great spot. So poison damage is going to start to stack up. I am at around half here. And uh, yeah, another sludge bomb is not ideal. I decide, you know what? I should probably conserve Decidueye just in case I need that, um, that Shadow Sneak for a little bit later as a nice little insurance. So I'm going to bring in the fucking cannon to bring in Magmortar here, who does actually take a Hex. And Hex is actually better than a sludge bomb. Uh, just because uh, I don't take much from that because I'm not status. So here's the thing. I can go for a flamethrower, um, or if they want to switch into something like the Beriscuta, it's not going to be great. But I decide I'm going to go for the obvious play just because I really need damage uh, on that Amoongus. But they're actually going to take this opportunity to switch into the Pulti guys too. Uh, is basically like, hey, how's it going? I'm just a little guy inside of a teapot. And now, guess what? You're, you're hot. Your tea is extra hot. And that shit is boiling over. That's going to take care of it with the flamethrower. And what that does is now allows the revenge switch uh, of whatever they want into it. So they actually opt to go into the Ditto. And Buddy is still, <laughs> he's kind of funny looking with his, uh, his little Terra Dragon there. So he does get caught up in the Sticky Web, important to note. And it is Dragon type. So I know that they can't really touch me. Like I can't do much to it, but I mean, I have it at half and I just have like a neutral you know, Psychic. So I'm going to fire off a Psychic here. They're going to go for a Thunderbolt, which doesn't end up being a two hit KO, which... Uh, is amazing, and as I expected the Psychic to kill, it literally lives it with 1 HP, which is annoying, but uh, not the end of the world, because I actually win the speed tie this time, or whatever, and I, I outspeed and finish it off with a Psychic, so I kill myself, and uh, with that, now they're down to just a couple of Pokemon left. Now, even though one of them is the Water type in the form of Beriscuta, I'm actually still in a good spot against it, and that's because of our freaking, our beams we've got in the back, so... They bring in the Beriscuta, but he's got the propeller tail spinning around, does get caught up in the sticky web, which should allow me to be faster, which is amazing. And now I'm going to go ahead and bust out the surprise solar beam. We're able to outspeed, and not only that, but the power herb is going to allow the solar beam to activate in one turn. We are fully charged up, 
and we are firing our laser. Absolutely blast the hell out of him. That is going to take care of it. Thank God for the sticky webs allowing us to be faster. Uh, but the surprise solar beam is great because Thunderbolt, I think, was close. Um, but a uh, solar beam is, is going to be able to take care of it. So now all I've got left is going to be this Amoongus in the... This is why we conserve the mag mortar. The late game sweep is absolutely clutch. All I got to do is connect on at least just a couple of flamethrowers. One is not quite going to be able enough to knock it out. Um, and they are able to put me to sleep with a spore, which is kind of a lost cause because while they can just go for a couple of sludge bombs, I'm going to wake up and you're going to get flamethrowered. Um, and that's just, that's just the fate that mag mortar be putting on people. So they actually realized that it's probably a lost cause. They're going to go ahead and head out and mag mortar showed them who's boss today. So. That's going to be the end of the match. I thought that was a very interesting one. Very cool team. And uh, yeah, with that, we also we have another match because you already know how we do it over here. So this is the point in the video where I ask, hey, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. It really does help out the channel. And I don't know, just freaking click the button. Or also don't. It does, it, it, do whatever you want. But let's get into it. So at this time, my dude's going to go ahead and lead off with a Torkoal. Last time we dealt with rain. This time, it's going to be sun. So if it's not one weather, it's always a freaking another. And... Torkoal is a little bit of a pain to deal with. I have a Carbink lead this time, and I am just a little guy. Listen, don't expect too much out of Car Car Binks. He's here to lay up some rocks and, like, maybe get a screen up before I go down. So, <laughs> good news is I know they probably are going to set up rocks of their own, so we go ahead and trade the stealth rock. But at this point, it's always risky business setting it up on a Torkoal. We know that these guys just go spinning and rocks go flying. So I decide, expecting them to go for the rapid spin, I'm actually going to bring in the gun guard, try to spin block him with the ghost type, have a good time, hit him with some decent damage or at least force a switch, and have a good gun guard time. So I come in and I am floating around and then I actually end up going for an eruption. Now, full health in the sun, absolutely roast and toast my freaking gun guard, who was floating by the way, looking cool, but now we're just looking cool in the damn shadow realm. So I lose Gengar straight away, uh, which is unfortunate, but at this point I'm like, well, all right, we're playing a little bit from behind. But we've been here before, baby. I decide I'm actually gonna bring in the Excadrill at this point because while I figure an earthquake probably doesn't kill it, I imagine I'm air balloon. They, if their only other attacking move is gonna be like eruption, uh, they're not gonna have a lot of health to do a lot of damage with it. So I'm floating in the air with my balloon, just like the damn Gengar was, except hopefully with a better fate. So I go for the earthquake here, and that is going to hurt a lot. They actually barely end up living it, which is annoying. And then, But the good news is they fire off an eruption. But with one HP, eruption is not going to do anything except for pop my balloon. It was, it was strong enough to pop the balloon. So I do lose that, but that's honestly solid because now I can actually just pick this thing off with a rapid spin. And I do imagine they probably want to conserve this thing, but they actually don't have any other hazard controls. As they switch out, you know, the next time the Torkoal comes in, He's just going to die to the stealth rock before it even sets up the drought. So they decide they should probably, they should probably get some use out of the, the sun while it's still around. And they bring in the Venusaur. So as I go for the rapid spin, first of all, I do at least get rid of my stealth rock on my side. Except this thing in chlorophyll is going to be very fast. And Venusaur is very scary. So I decide Carbink probably doesn't do a whole lot for me. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Rock Boy once more here. So they actually... It turns out to be a physical Venusaur, which... I do fuck with. That's actually pretty crazy. You don't generally see these things going for pedal dance, um, and that's going to be an easy two hit KO. I'm especially defensive, hoping that I was going to be able to take something, but yeah, two pedal dances, and I am dead. So down goes the carbink, but I mean, moral of the story, this thing was here to die, you know, kind of anyway. And the good thing about pedal dance is they are actually locked in for one more turn at least. So I'm relatively free to bring in the mag mortar here, and I can go ahead and uh, go for a flamethrower, which is boosted by the sun. So. First of all, they go for the pedal dance. It does touch me, so it makes contact, activates the flame body, which now burns it, and they get confused. And then the icing on the cake is now you get flamethrowered. So that was a bad turn to be a Venusaur. Talk about getting burnt, confused, and then just burnt to death. So that's going to take care of Venusaur, uh, main sun sweeper out of the way. And as they go into Vaporeon, you already know the drill. And uh, at this point... We're actually in a pretty good spot here because while I do have Power Herb to activate Solar Beam immediately, I'm actually in the sun, so I don't even need to use that. And while Solar Beam is almost a guaranteed one-hit KO with the Grass Terra, it's un—it's like I'm not exactly sure if it's going to. So I decide to go for the Grass Terra here to first of all get some extra damage, but second of all, if it does end up living and then they just fire off a, whatever, a Surf, it's you're not going to do much to me. So 
I do go ahead and put the flower on my head. I'm looking like a fiery flower pot. And I am able to fire off the solar beam just using Buddy's own sun, which is amazing. And beam the hell out of him with both arms. That is going to take care of Venusaur. Or, sorry. I'm, we took care of Venusaur and freaking Vaporeon. So, needless to say, Magmortis is taking care of folks out here. And that's going to finish off uh, the, the, the freaking Vaporeon. So, now they're going to bring in the Cleaver. Now, the bad news is, as I don't have a sticky web up, this fella is going to be quick. And a, I, I do not enjoy taking, like, an X scissor. So... I decided I'm actually going to switch into Excadrill, and here's the thing, Excadrill has a great matchup against pr like pretty much their entire team at this point, and we're going to try to go ahead and, and exploit that. So as I bring in the Mole, they actually end up going for the Fury Cutter. Shout out to Buddy for using uh, Fury Cutter Cleaver. If you haven't seen my Fury Cutter Cleaver video, you should probably go check that out. It's one of my favorites in a long time, but uh, I can outspeed here, and Iron Head is going to be a super effective hit. Knocks the fella out, and it, thank God he didn't have like three other Fury Cutters under his belt before that because it would have started to hurt, but uh, that is going to take care of it now. As they bring in Gardevoir, there's one thing that can stop this, and that is if it is going to be running Choice Scarf. It's if, if it's able to outspeed me and hit me with a, well, like, Mystical Fire, we're going to have a bad time. But guess what? That is a gamble I'm, I'm willing to risk, so I'm just going to go for another Iron Head here. They do just stay in. They are not Scarf, and Iron Head just give them some, some Iron Head to death. Pause, but that takes care of uh, of the Gardevoir, and now they're down to two Pokemon left. First of all, they have a Blaziken, and after that it's just going to be a Torkoal who dies on Stealth Rock switching. So, uh, I just decided to go for the Earthquake. Kind of, I am expecting the Protect here for the Speed Boost, but they just don't do it. They did not use Protection, and that is ill-advised. So, that's going to take care of the Blaziken with a crit, which I believe did not matter, and Excadrill just comes in and just sweeps the place up like a damn janitor at the end of the night. So. Torkoal comes in, says hello, and then just gets stabbed to death by some rocks and dies. So that is going to be the end of the game. And uh, Solar Beam and stuff with the, with the freaking Mag Mortar is always fun. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate all the love, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.